So in this video, we'll be looking into uh, a tool that I've been using for some time. Uh, it's called GoTask. So basically, Task is a, a task on a build tool similar to Makefile, which, which aims to make our like development workflow much easier and simpler and manageable. So yeah, you can install it using a uh, Mac or if you have any of like if based on your operating system, you can choose there are like ways you can install it. So since I use Mac, I will just install it like this. Okay, it's installed. For some reason, Brew decided to update all my packages. So it's all good. So okay, I will just leave it here. Okay, so basically. If you have been using Makefile, you know the hassle around managing it, right? Like the for a smaller project, it doesn't make much of an issue. It doesn't give you much problem. But as the project grows larger, the issue around management and operation and readability uh, will start to become more evident. So in this video, I'll be showing you the two uh, core tasks that I've been using for some time for like my larger projects and it's similar to Makefile. Like it's simpler, manageable, as I said, and readable so let's get into it so first of all let's start by creating a demo app i'll just call it main.go uh, rather than doing this what if what if yeah, i'll just make it much bigger Okay, I think you can see it. Okay. This should do it. Okay. Yeah. We are good. Let's make it simple. So first of all, in order to create a task file, you would create like <clears throat> similar to GNU make, uh, you would create make file. Uh, here in ta to use task, you would create a file called task file <clears throat> and the extension should be yaml as task file is written in yaml so immediately you can see okay using yaml would be much easier and readable um, if you have been in working in devops or sre space uh, yaml feels like home and using task file will come natural to you uh, if you have used docker compose um, task file starts with version similar to docker compose and the current running version of task file is three. So after that, what we will do is the schema of task file looks uh, like this. You define task, tasks, it's uh, like plural form. And each, like under the task, you define individual task. And inside that, you run commands. So let's start by creating a simple task. So I will create a task called run app and just so I'll just go run main.co. So this should we created tasks directive and created a new task and inside the task we added a new uh, expression or command. So let's run it. Uh, in order to run the task you define like you call task and the task name. So as you can see, it ran the command and showed the output. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show was you can define variable inside task as well. So using var directive, and let me create a variable called name. Right. This it. Uh, let's use uh, Harry. Okay. Now, in order to use that uh, variable, you just wrap it around double curly braces and access it using dot name now if you have been using jinja like if you have ever used a jinja templating it's something similar so accessing variable would be using that now if i run the task command again which shows the output of echo heavy or echo the variable name uh, similar to variable you can define environment variables as well so I'll just call it maybe uh, db 
underscore name of my database okay and you can access it using dollar and the name of the environment variable this is different to variable accessing variable so no, this one should be you should be careful about this one so if i run it again you'll see it printed out my database there are other features as well in dot file but i want to highlight some of the features that i like the most so the one thing that i like was whenever we are working with project we have a folder like file called dot n which consists of credential for now i'll just create a one called dot password and this is secret super secret okay so we have dot n right the use of dot n is good or bad that's uh like you'll find different people having different opinion on this one so i will not go on that part if you have dot n you can load it into your uh, task file using dot n directive and specify the path to your dot n and for instance it is on my home directory i'll just do dot n now you can create an environment variable using that i'll just call tv tv underscore password so if the name of the name of the whatever credential and okay now if i run it again oh sorry i need to add it here echo and then tv underscore password now if i run it again you can see it uh, printed out the database secret so this is really useful when you're working with uh, project dot head that has dot and or credential inside a file the other thing that i wanted to show you was like these variables are locally scoped uh within this task right if you want to create a global variable or global environment variable you can just define it up on top uh, i'll just do app name and i'll call this demo app now you can access it using the same way as you would access the other one other environment variable and you run it it shows the app name it's good another interesting thing that i found was let's run it you can see the name of the task appears here um, but i want something like readable on here i can rename the task using labels uh, maybe like run application now if i run the task again it will show the renamed version of the task name which is really neat you can add description to task sorry description to task uh, like this task runs application and add a summary as well okay now these description and uh, summary if you have used make file we used to use some fancy regex uh with with the target help command to show us all the available uh, target and the description right but using uh, task file and description summary you can list it using task double dash list and it automatically shows you all the available uh, comments sorry task and their description if you want to get summary you can use double dash summary and the task name which is run dash app now it shows the individual summary of a task which is the name and the like description sorry summary we added and also it shows all the commands that are defined under that task the other thing that you can do is you can define task within a task so suppose we have run app like it's we create a, another task called list fights okay so i'll just come with commands and it just do ls seller i'll just copy these two here now if you want to run this task inside the previous one you just go inside the command and define directive task and give the name of the task using list files so if i run it again let me just grab it if i run it 
it will run all the tasks, but also it, it, it runs different tasks that we had defined. So this makes configuration much easier and modular. Now you can define separate tasks for individual jobs and then and link it inside your main task. You can see why why I like this, right? <laughs> so the other thing is, um, I like instead of writing this, I like I don't want to use the this like task name. I can uh, add an alias for it. I'm saying oh, okay, list lsfs. Okay, shortcut. So instead of using this list file, I'll just use lsfs, and you can reference the alias in here, and which would work just fine. Okay, now the other thing that I found really interesting on on while using task file was uh, the ability to detect or check whether the task should run or not. And generally, in Makefile, you used to do some hacky like shell script to determine whether the files has been changed or not. In task file, it is provided to you as a feature, so you can just define source in here and define what files you want to look at. So I want to make sure like if anything changes in main.go, then only execute this task, otherwise don't do it. So if we run it now, it will run once. Now if I run it again, it will say the main.go has not been changed and it's up to date. So if I update it again, change, now it will run the task again which is one of like really neat feature. Another interesting thing that I found was uh, use of preconditions. So precondition, what, they, what it does is it checks if condition we defined here is satisfied before executing the task. So in order to run this, uh, this task, we need to have main.go, right? Uh, simple, like basic simple test. So we will just test if main.go exists. Now, if it exists, it will only run run the uh, run the task otherwise it will throw an error so when it exists we'll run it it hasn't been changed okay just remove it for now okay now if i rename it to something else other than main.go ah just rename it demo so you will see that it is showing an error saying precondition not met. It, it is basically, it, it is providing us with a feature, like some guardrail to make sure our task doesn't fail beforehand. You can add other conditions as well to make it more resilient. Let me revert it back to the main.go. Now, another interesting feature that I found was the use of deferring a task. So suppose you ran this, all of these, right? And let me create a build, build app task. So what I can do is I can define a task in here. Uh, so I ran it, so I can add it in here. Task, I'll just add build app. Now what it does is it goes serially and executes build app if i run it uh, just remove it but it's better to have it for now it just keeps on prompting me so, as you can see it uh, ran the build build task and uh, created a file right now imagine you want to have some cleanup task like in general cases you wouldn't delete the binary you just build right but but sometime you would have created some intermediate temporary files or folders which you want to be cleaned up after your build operation is uh, completed so just create a task called cleanup script uh cleanup and then maybe add a label and description to those as well So let's create a commands and I'll just remove the main binary for now. Now what you can do here is like I have defined a task in here. Now instead of defining it like this, I can define it up on top, defer using defer attribute and, and just add the, the task here. This is the cleanup one. 
So what this does is once this task completes, it will run the, the cleanup task using which is defined at the end. Now if I run it again, you can see it ran the all the commands one by one, including the modular ones as well. And also it ran cleanup task at the end, even if it's defined on top. But this is really neat, right? This provides you a neat feature so that you can clean up your build uh, workspace after the, work, the com job has been completed. Now, the another thing that I want to show you was uh, suppose if you were using like a lot of time we use piping in our make file or while creating a build script, right? Ex example wise, if I do exit one and print echo hello world, let's see what happens. Theoretically, this should fail, right? Now, if I run it, it, it will not fail because we haven't specified pipe fail in our shell option. Generally, you just define it on the shell script on top. A lot of time I see people using makefile ignoring this this uh, gotcha and and eventually in the long run it will it will come and bite you, I guess. So in order to avoid this, task file provides you with a set attribute where you can define shell option like py fail. By fail. Now, if you run the code again, it will throw an error. Now, this is another cool thing. Just do exit zero, everything went fine, and it runs again. So, the another interesting thing that I want to show you was you, your task doesn't has to be have to be like a one time job. You can keep on checking if this main file changes or not, and if it changes, it it will trigger the build operation again. So suppose uh, I have like task build app in here, or I can do task run app, run app, okay. So I want to make sure like I keep eye on this one. So the way you can do it is using intervals. So I'll define interval in here and I'll do provide an interval of 200 milliseconds and you need to have source defined if you want to watch if anything changes and trigger the uh, trigger the task so now instead of just running task run app i'll just i'll use double dash watch switch and what this does is it keeps on looking at main like it evaluates the main the go file and if anything changes at first it doesn't do anything it's up to date right now if i go and change it here change it just triggered the task again let's change it back again it triggered it again which is really good you can go ahead and explore more there are a lot of features that it provides yeah let me know in the comment below uh is there any other build tool that you love i would love to hear about it please uh, like and subscribe and show more so some support as this will help me uh, create more such interesting videos. Until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.